Steep for riding, but leave it to the Sarge to find the way. Word has come, travelers on their way to Baltic. So here to welcome them, Prince Mohammed Ayish Khan, brother of the Mir, the ruler of this mountain kingdom. Those are the Mir's children, Crown Prince Chazan Far, offering the customary silver platter laden with fruit. In physical type, they are like Southern Europeans. The people of Hunza claim to be descendants of Greek soldiers of Alexander the Great. Welcome to Hunza. Welcome to Hunza. What a beautiful trip. Thank you. His Highness expected. The royal palace, designed by the Mir himself. Built by native craftsmen of the granite and timber of the Hunza Valley. According to tradition, the Mir greets his visitors at the threshold of his home. Your Highness, may I introduce Colonel Ataula and two American airmen. Glad to meet you, Your Highness. Thank you very much. How do you do, Your Highness? How are you? Welcome to Hunza, please. please. Thank you. Legend is that the Mirs of Hunza are descended from Alexander the Great himself. Hunza's national game, polo, which they say originated in these regions. Every village has its polo grounds, and often it's the town square. Here in the backyard behind the Mir's stable, the children start early to learn the intricacies of polo. My kingdom for a horse might well be the cry for these youngsters. And sometimes it would be easier on the toes. two rival teams, choosing up sides with the traditional ritual. Where's the referee? There is none. What are the rules of the game? There are none to speak of. Anything goes short of mayhem. The inter-rivalry between the local villages is fierce and often runs to a fever pitch. In this land of legend, even horses have a legend. Marco Polo, who didn't play the game, tells of horses descended from Bucephalus, war charger of Alexander the Great. The 
Vermeer riding at full tilt. the ball in flight and you can carry it or pass it to a teammate to carry across the goal line. Polo as they play it in regions where it was born. What do you know? The Sarge has joined the band. <laughs> Meanwhile, back in the Mears stable, the sky and the boy who's always late the school sponsored by the Aga Khan spiritual leader of the Ismaili sect of Islam to which the Hunza people belong four languages taught English Urdu, common in parts of India, Persian, and Arabic. Burushaski, their own Hunza language, is a mystery tongue and has no writing. Four versions of five words, horse, dog, water, sky, bread. Silar and Gredulo, water. Water. Urdulo, pani. Pani. Parsiulo, ah. Arabiulo, mine. Mine. Angrezulo, Osman, and Sky. Urdulo, Osman. Farsiulo, Osman. Arabiulo, Samain. Shabash. Angrezulo, Shapika, bread. Urdulo, Roti. Farsiulo, Nan. Arabiulo, Hubzun. Shabash. Ishaq. Utasens. Gora. Ask. Harassan. Shabash. Muntaz. School days at Hunza Hieroglyphic High under Headmaster Sultan Ali. Of work they have their share like children everywhere when they're not learning ABCs or arithmetic in Hunza East. They're playing games or climbing trees. They're stubbing toes and skinning knees or getting stung by bumblebees in Hunza, Hunza. And how could any mountain paradise be complete without a place to go fishing? Afternoon tea for the royal family in a setting reminiscent of a Renoir painting.
The Mir's wife, the Rani, only recently emerged from Purda, the veiled seclusion of the Orient, never before photographed. The Mir, educated at English type schools in Gilgit and Rawalpindi. Some years ago, at the invitation of the Aga Khan, the Mir traveled to Europe. His dream now, America. Huns are cuts are healthy, some live a hundred years. They don't need pills to cure their ills in Hunza, Hunza. The food they eat is simple, they snub the cup that cheers. No alcohol is used at all in Hunza. The health of the people proverbial. Many diseases common elsewhere, unknown here. Marco Polo said that he was cured of sickness by the salubrious air of these mountains. The Hunzakuts produce nearly everything they need, the valley self-sustaining. ancestral castle of the Mirs of Hunza in the village of Altet, where they resided before they moved to Baltet. Just over those mountains, Russian Central Asia and Red China, Hunza guarded by its mountain ramparts, a Himalayan version of classical Arcadia. Total population, all around 25,000. In this Himalayan lost world, paradise without poverty. Nobody has too little, nobody has too much. There's no one passing laws and acts, no cops, no jails, no income tax. They live and love and just relax in Hunza. Yes, the Mir holds a ceremonial Durbar. Outdoors, simple in keeping with his country's economy. Look, back there above the Mir's dais, the curling twisted horns, the Ovis Poli, named for Marco Polo. The longer V-shaped horns, the Ibex. Here the Mir meets every morning with the town elders and headmen of nearby villages. He's the judge and the jury. Complaints concern water rights and grazing privileges, mostly. You plead your own case. No lawyers. Utopia. These Hunzakut Nijinsky, some of them, are the chief men of the villages. A sword dance that recalls the time when the people here were wild raiders and looters like a page out of half-forgotten Hunza history.
As they depart, our seekers for a land of escape say, yes, indeed, this could be it. Someday, someday we may return. And square.